Hey guys, Chris here with the good old gamer. So I'm back. Quick little update. Little dude's back at home. Everything's going really, really well there. Here's a cute little picture. We finally got a picture of him smiling. Everything's going great. And I want to thank you all for your support and kind words over the past week. All right. So since I've kind of been out of it, you know, taking care of the little dude, things have gotten kind of nuts. Next generation gaming from Xbox, PlayStation, uh, new AMD, RDNA 2 stuff, Zen 3 stuff, it's gone nuts. But what's really kind of changed in my perspective once I took a step back from everything and analyzed the situation, I honestly think that AMD with RDNA 2 might actually win this generation. Now, both AMD and NVIDIA are going to have strengths and weaknesses, but that's what I want to talk to you guys about here today. But before we get started, if you like the channel and like this kind of content, please make sure you hit that like button and leave a comment in the comment section below. This lets YouTube know that the video is good and it should share it with other people. YouTube likes to nerf my videos if you guys don't hit that like button in the same amount or continuing to increase. So I do really appreciate that. It really helps support the channel and thank you. All right, so since last week, we now have the release of the RTX 3090. I haven't yet talked about that since it's officially been reviewed, and it's 10% faster than the RTX 3080. This is what Paul told me on my live stream, and this is what the leaks told us a few weeks ago. So those were right on spot. Now, this is important because we now know the absolute best performance that NVIDIA can deliver this generation, and it's not quite as high as we were all hoping. I was hoping for 15 to 20% higher than the 3080, but since it's only 10 to sometimes 15% faster, and honestly, being only 10% faster, what this says to me is AMD has a real shot at actually taking the performance crown for the first time in a very long time. Okay, so why, what's kind of the shift here? First off, AMD, when they teased out the render of the next generation RDNA 2, we assume they're going to be the 6000 series cards, but we don't even really know that yet. But once we saw this render here, it's very clear to see that AMD is trying to compete. This is the first time that they really invested heavily in a good cooler for their graphics cards. I mean, Radeon 7, you could argue that they tried a little bit. But for the most part, the reference cards on like Navi last year, they were just basic stock blower coolers and they weren't very good. My key takeaway from that is AMD wants you and me to know that they're taking this generation seriously. That was my main takeaway from them releasing that shot. And it looks like a decent AIB third party cooler that you would normally get from somebody like Gigabyte or Asus or whoever. So they're definitely not going to be thermal throttling their own cards like they did with Vega and Navi. But the main advantage that I think AMD is going to have over Nvidia is going to be due to the TSMC 7 nanometer process or 7 nanometer plus, whichever one they go with. Either one will deliver an advantage. And their key takeaway is going to be their GPUs will perform similarly and draw significantly less power. And I think that this is actually going to be a huge deal because if you think about it, if you have a graphics card that is pulling, let's say 220 watts, like the 3070, competing with something like a 180 watt card from AMD, that's going to run much cooler, much quieter, and obviously save you from pushing a lot more heat into your room. And this is gonna be a big benefit for a lot of people that don't have a huge open area, and they just want that level of performance. Now, even something like the RTX 3080, let's say AMD has a competitor to that, it'll probably run considerably lower in power. Now, for a lot of people, this isn't an issue, but 320 watts of power will heat up a small room. If you're in a 12 by 12 room or something about that size, that's gonna get very, very hot during a long session of gaming. The AMD card would likely be closer to 250, 260 watts. It'll still get warm, but it'll be less warm and deliver similar, if not better, performance. So for a lot of people out there, this is going to be a very attractive option. It'll also be interesting if with standard GDDR6, if they can get similar performance, that means the RAM will actually cost them less money, which is the reason why we think they're gonna give you more, like 16 gigs instead of like eight or 10, like Nvidia has. So you'll either get more memory for the same price 
or they'll actually give you the same amount of memory at a much reduced price. So to me, this is gonna make them extremely competitive with Nvidia. They're going to have performance advantage per watt. This is really gonna be huge in the laptop market. The last time we really saw this was the HD 5000 and 6000 series, basically when Nvidia released Fermi. And this kind of seems almost like another Fermi for them because AMD's technology is actually gonna be vastly superior due to the process. And I actually think they might even have IPC advantages over Ampere, which don't seem to be a whole lot better than what we saw from Turing. So this time around, I think the laptop market's definitely gonna swing back into AMD's favor, and that's gonna be a huge win for them. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, what about the performance crown? Well, we had rumors that it was only gonna be like 56, 60 CUs, but it seems much more likely now with all of the information out there, there will be an 80 CU unit. This will compete very, very well with the RTX 3080. I figured it would beat it by 10 to 15%. Now that we know that the 3090 is only 10% faster, this means AMD should be able to compete with the RTX 3090. And honestly, during the launch of Ampere, I didn't think that was gonna be possible due to its massive CUDA core count. But as we now know now, this does not directly translate into performance, not as much as we thought. There's a bigger loss on that huge shader count. So this really puts things in perspective here. I think we're gonna have a really interesting market from both sides. Now, let's talk about features because this is really what it's gonna come down to. You may not care about the performance per watt thing. I do, I'd rather have something drawing less power and giving me the same performance if I have that option for equal money. You may not care about that. A lot of people are gonna care about other features. So what NVIDIA offers is actually pretty strong. Their whole AI suite that they showed off during their reveal for Ampere is really appealing for any creators out there. If you need that kind of technology, I don't think AMD is gonna have an answer for that. It's likely they will have an answer for the uh, direct IO thing that they have or the RTX IO, whatever they call it. They will have probably some sort of competing solution. AMD really needs to hammer home whatever version of DLSS that they have. I think that's a big feature that NVIDIA has, but I do believe DirectML is what they're using on the Xbox with Microsoft, and I believe that would be very easy for them to go ahead and use on their graphics cards. But they need to talk about that and really hammer that point home. If it looks like it's gonna work as well as DLSS or close enough, then it's a non-issue. If DLSS is kind of in its own category and it doesn't have a competitor from AMD, that's a huge win for Nvidia. Now RTX, their proprietary GameWorks version of ray tracing that goes on top of uh, DirectX 12's ray tracing, that I don't think is gonna be that big of a deal because of the consoles. All of the games are gonna be designed to run on the consoles first and then ported to PC. It's just the way it goes. And obviously those are all using RDNA 2. So that means the ray tracing implementation on the AMD cards, I think might just work better than what Nvidia has because that has to be shoehorned in. Nvidia will likely need to more adopt or adapt to what AMD is doing. Now that's not gonna be for every game. We know just like with GameWorks, Nvidia is gonna pay developers to specifically make games run on their specific hardware a little bit better. It happens, this is what happens when you throw money at people, they do what you want and make stuff run better on your stuff. There's no way around that, so Nvidia will still have some advantages there, but they're going to have to directly implement it just like they did with Gameworks over the past few years, and most of the time you can turn that stuff off, still get a great game experience and it doesn't matter. So I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. Now those are the key advantages that I think Nvidia has. I don't think the RTX really matters that much, but DLSS and all of their AI stuff is a really huge selling point for them, especially if you're a creator. A lot of that's gonna be really tempting. I don't think AMD is gonna be able to compete with most of that. Now, where AMD does have the advantage, like I just mentioned, is in the consoles. The games are going to be designed to run on AMD hardware first. Unless Nvidia goes through and says, hey, we want the Witcher 4, for example, to run best on our stuff and pumps a ton of money into the companies to make sure that it's optimized specifically for their cards, likely overall games are going to run really well on RDNA 2. And we're already starting to get hints of how powerful these next generation graphics cards are going to be. We're starting to see Xbox Series X uh, backwards compatibility games being benchmarked. And that's pretty impressive, especially considering there's zero optimizations there. It's just brute force. And we're not even talking about similar architectures. We're 
talking about Polaris to RDNA 2, and it's basically double the performance for double the teraflops. That is extremely impressive with no optimizations at all. With optimizations, what, 2.5, three times the performance? Not out of this world. So that is looking highly impressive for AMD, and just having that baked in optimization from all almost all AAA developers right off the jump is gonna be their huge win. And of course, like I mentioned before, the performance per watt advantage is going to be huge in the laptop market and for anybody that doesn't have a giant open room and doesn't feel like basically turning the room into a sauna anytime they wanna play a game. So that's a pretty big advantage there and that will definitely be a big point for me personally. I don't like drawing extra power completely unnecessarily. And then the final thing that AMD typically has can't say for sure, but they usually have performance per watt advantage as well. For example, we let's use the 3070. Let's say it's just as fast as a 2080 Ti, which is what NVIDIA is saying. So, okay, if AMD offers that level of performance at, let's say, 399 or 449, and let's say the even at 449, let's say they give you more RAM, 16 gigabytes of RAM, there, there's always some advantage there that NVIDIA just usually doesn't like to compete with. So they're going to have the price to performance advantage, even if it's not massive, it's usually like 20% better, which, hey, I mean, if you're gonna get the same performance and get it at lower power draw and lower heat production and 20% cheaper, for me personally, that is a big win. Now it's gonna take a, you know the masses out there a long time to kind of come to grips with that. This actually reminds me a lot of the HD 4870 type of time where AMD came out with a card at 299, and it was actually beating the GTX 260, which I believe at the time was 449 or five or 499. So it was 450 to $500. This came out at 299, beat that one. And if you overclocked, it was almost as fast as like the $650 GTX 280. So that was massively disruptive. I don't think AMD is gonna be that competitive on price, but if they want to be, they can. And to me, that's the reason why anybody at this point should just wait. Obviously, you can't buy RTX 30 series cards right now, and we're only about a month away from seeing what AMD has. If they really wanted to compete on price, they could. I think it's still gonna be better value overall, though. So there we go, guys. If you just take a step back and look at the situation objectively, unless you need the AI stuff, and that's gonna be extremely beneficial to you, if it is, you wanna go with NVIDIA. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Their tools are great and amazing, and if that's going to make you money and make your life easier, just go ahead and buy that. But if you're just looking to game like most people are, I think AMD's really gonna surprise us with the next generation optimizations built right into RDNA 2. Games I think are gonna run just great on these cards throughout the entire generation, whereas the 30 series might need specific tweaks. That seems to be the case with NVIDIA. They really need to tune each game for per architecture. That's why like older NVIDIA cards tend to do much worse on uh, newer games like Maxwell's starting to fall off a little bit now. Pascal's gonna start falling off now that Ampere's here. And it'll basically be Turing and Ampere is what they're going to be really focusing on for the NVIDIA side. AMD's, like I said, it's in the console. So you know you're gonna be good throughout the whole generation. And that's gonna be really appealing for a lot of people considering it's probably gonna cost less and come in with a lower power draw, which means less heat production, which means their rooms run cooler for the same performance. So this is gonna be really interesting. There's gonna be a lot of good options for everybody. Even the next gen consoles look great. If you just don't wanna deal with PC, those are a good option. Those are gonna run really well. We're already starting to see that. So I honestly don't think you can go wrong overall. But right now, I do think that AMD can take the performance crown and with all the rest of its advantages, you gotta wait. Let's wait and see what they have. I'm really excited to see exactly how this all pans out. But like I said, I don't think there's gonna be any losers in this situation. I think we're all gonna be winners. And that's the thing that really makes me happy about this particular generation, S especially compared to Turing. That was bad. Nobody won there. But this time around, I think everybody's gonna do really well, no matter which way you decide to go. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you guys think that this is gonna be a great generation? Are you planning on picking up any of these cards? Are you kinda on the fence? Do you think Pascal and Polaris and Vega, do you think those are gonna hold out maybe till next gen? Or are you gonna try to stretch it a little bit? 
I'm really interested to hear what you guys are doing. So please let me know in that comment section below. If you like the video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. Sharing is a great way to get this message out there. And in a world where everybody's getting divisive and fanboys are beating each other up, I think there's no wrong option. I think this is a good message that everybody should take away. Whichever way you want to go, you're probably going to be okay. Just know that there's going to be benefits to whichever way you go is going to have pros and cons. And as long as you understand that, you should be good. So I think most people out there could probably use this message at that point. So thank you guys very much. I'm going to go play with my kid. And that's all I have for you here today. I'll catch you guys in the next video.